Let me tell you a story about Marilyn's Pool Cafe. Like Marilyn Monroe, that's the name, Marilyn's Pool Cafe. What can you do there, boss? You can shoot pool. That's what you can do at the time. Now there's also a restaurant. A beautiful couple, Marcel and Angelina are the owners. They're friends of us and uh, I was doing the security there. Now, I wasn't really prominent there all the time because I didn't need to. I lived a mile away from the house and everybody in town knew that I was kind of the security guy. So well, there was not a lot of trouble there. But you know, sometimes people come from different cities and uh, they can start trouble. So the only thing he needed to do is give me a call. I would drive over and bada bing bada boom, we took care of the problem. Now this time they didn't have to call me because we were there at Christmas, second Christmas day. Everybody's having a great time and there's this big guy. And when I say big, you know this got me in trouble a few times here in America. That means you're not fat. That means you're a big guy, okay? So sometimes I say here to an, uh, an American person, I go, man, look at you, you look big. And you go, well, I didn't gain any weight. I go, no, that's not what I mean. You're a freaking giant guy. Anyway. I'm there, there's this big guy with a big lady and uh, he's playing the slot machine. In Holland, in every bar, you have pretty much a slot machine. You can gamble. And uh, obviously, needless to say, it's not going his way because every time he was shaking that machine. So I'm looking at the owner, like I'm gonna say something and the owner goes, no, 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 don't worry about it. I'll, I'll take care of it. I think he was, he believed that I was gonna hit him, which it's, first of all, it's Christmas day, second Christmas day, I would never do that. And, and second of all, I would never do that anyway. I always go over to talk. But anyway, I let him go. He goes to the guy, the guy looks at him, they nod yes, he walks away, the guy looks at his wife or his girlfriend, uh, start laughing and he starts shaking the, the slot machine again. So I walk over and I say, hey listen, and my buddy is there by the way, Leon van Dijk. You remember Leon van Dijk? He's one of the guys responsible for my career because he was the only sparring partner that I had in Holland. And he brought his girlfriend who was also a great mixed martial artist. So we're there, I walk over to the guy, Leon walks over to the guy, he stands a little close, he doesn't stand with me. And I tell uh, the wife, say, let's go over the, the guy, this man, you gotta have to slow down a little bit. I mean, it's Christmas time, can I get you a beer or something, you know, so uh, relax. And, and maybe you should stop gambling because if you're not winning, it's not gonna be a fun Christmas day. And he goes, what do you want? I said, well, that, what I'm asking you right now, could you please tone it down a little bit? Can I get you a drink? And he's pushing me with his right hand on my chest, boof. And I look at Leon and I say, Mata Leo. And he knows what that means. And every person who does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu knows what it means. Mata Leo means in Portuguese, kill the lion. Because apparently the only way to kill a lion is by a rear naked choke. So a different name for rear naked choke is Mata Leo. So I look at Leon, I smile and I say Mata Leo. <clears throat> and right away I do exactly the same thing to that person which triggered that reaction from him pushing me. And what do you know? I trigger the same reaction. This time I was ready though. So he's a big guy, like I said, right? He's pushing me, I push his hand to the side, I jump up in his neck, like uh, Thunder Lips and Rocky, right? When they're uh, uh, fighting. I'm up in the pants and everybody's freaking out. He said, no, 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 be quiet, be quiet. Go five, four, three, and boof. He fell down, hold a few more seconds. Okay, he's out. I grab him by the feet and I start dragging him out. And while I'm dragging him out, I get sucker punched in the face and I'm looking and it is his girlfriend. And as soon as I look at her, boom, she gets glocked. And that was the girlfriend from Leon Van Dyke. <laughs> she knocked her out. So now we're both grabbing him by the ankles and we're pulling him outside. We called the police, but they were gone before the police came. Uh, the jacket was in the in the place. You know, we, we asked about the jacket because the keys were in there. And uh, I said, no, you shouldn't be driving because you're drunk. This is a very dangerous thing. So come back later. It took two weeks actually for him to pick up that jacket. But that is story number one. That's just a little story that I gave because there was always a bar where something happened. Second story. Okay, so my wife is taking driver's classes, driving classes. And he, she has this crazy instructor, she tells me all the time. It's like ADD is all over the place and he's talking really weird, but you know, he's a fun guy. It's just a crazy guy. So now we're in the bar, uh, same bar with my wife. And apparently he said something to my wife. So my wife walks over to me and she goes, hey boss, I think you should start stretching. I go, why would you say that? He said, well, that guy right there, this big bodybuilder guy, said that he was gonna beat me up. I go, why? He says, I don't know, She's talk he's talking to two ladies and suddenly he turned to me and says, I'm gonna beat the crap out of you in a few minutes. I go, really? Okay, so I'm walking over and I say, excuse me, did you just tell my girlfriend that you were gonna beat her up? And he goes, uh, yeah. I did, and then he looked at the two ladies he was talking about. I had this two times in my life. This was one of the two few times he said, he goes, ladies, I have some business to take care of. Give me a moment. And as soon as he said that, suddenly he made a move for the bar stool and he lifts it above his head. But needless to say, when two hands are busy, he had no defense. So I go, bang, the guy goes down. I grab him by the head, knee him in the face, bar broke, like the railing of the bar 
broken. By the way, if you ever go to that place, it's still broke. They told me we're never going to fix it because this is a great story. Boss with them broke broke the bar here with somebody's head. So teeth are flying. This whole thing it went a little bit too hard. But hey, what can I do? He wanted to hit me with a chair on my head. So uh, we bring the guy outside. Same thing. Uh, I called the police on him though. So the police came and I think he needed to go to the hospital. So the next day, my wife is taking driver's classes, driving classes. And that weirdo instructor comes in, but he's late, like 10 minutes late. And he's sweating and he's like all freaking out. And my wife goes, what's going on? He says, oh, I have a crazy son. He always gets into fights. And uh, yesterday he picked a fight with the wrong person. So my wife goes, oh crap, that's the guy, right? <clears throat> so now fast forward <clears throat> to New Year's. Um, New Year's Eve in Holland is the same as the 4th of July here. That's where we use fireworks, big fireworks. So we're standing outside and we're shooting fireworks at each other with rockets and we throw firecrackers and we do, you know, do crazy stuff like every kid does or kid does while well, we were still kids even though I was like 24 uh, playing with fireworks and suddenly a friend of mine goes like hey boss I brought a bomb I go excuse me a, b a bomb he says yeah I got C4 I say you're kidding I want to detonate the bomb I never did that in my life please can I detonate the bomb and he goes sure so he goes and get it and he comes back and there's a little plastic square box whatever it is with like six feet of wire and i go yeah because you have to detonate it with a, the with the battery uh and i go yeah we, we're gonna need more wire man because this is not good uh, I, i'm gonna blow myself up so what do we do what do we do i mean it's midnight you can't go to a store right now and suddenly this guy taps me on the shoulder and he says hey boss come with me i got the uh, i have an answer for you so i walk with the guy he opens the back of his car and he starts ripping out his speaker cables and i go no no, no stop 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 i said don't do that man we'll find some cables i said you're drunk right now you drank too much you know and tomorrow you're gonna hate yourself he said no no no, don't worry about it. i want to see you detonate that bomb i go Are you sure yeah okay so we start ripping the the speaker cables out and then suddenly he told me uh he says you don't remember me right i go no enlighten me and he goes I, uh, you beat my teeth out here uh, at the bar one time. You need me in the face. I go, shit, that was you, but you were a giant guy. He says, yeah, I was doing a lot of steroids at the time and it made me a very angry uh, person, but you actually set me free. He said, you you set me straight because from that moment on, I never uh, used steroids anymore and I was never aggressive anymore, so I never got in trouble. So it ended up with uh, him and I drinking a beer together and actually every time when we would see each other in the bar afterwards we would always sit down and drink a beer together see this is what life is all about you know you have a driver instructor who's crazy who has a crazy son and the crazy son gets beaten up but he learns from his lesson this is a hollywood story if you think about it because at the end love will prevail and that's what all was uh, over love now i give you one more thing um Fire spitting, I was doing that as well. If you ever decide to do that, you do it with lamp oil, at least that's what we did. Put it in your mouth, don't swallow for sure, because that's very dangerous. And when you blow out, you go <laughs> Whatever you do, never open your mouth. But if you have asthma, and this is a good tip for you, apparently when the oil is out, there's still oil in your mouth. And if you breathe that in, those fumes can trigger an asthma attack, which it did with me. So um, watch out. Uh, thankfully nowadays the last asthma attack I had or like a big attack like that is a long time ago and uh, nowadays they just give you a shot and immediately 10 seconds later the asthma is gone it's amazing what they can do right now so watch out if you decide to fire spit and lay uh, kids at home don't do it fire spitting don't open your mouth make sure you don't breathe in and even after you fire spit is that even a word yeah fire sp spat fire spat whatever it is I'm still Dutch um, make sure that you don't inhale the fumes because that could be trouble all right everybody i hope you enjoyed that story it was a crazy story thank you leon godspeed and breathe on breathe on yeah that's because of the o2 trainer oh <gasps>